Greetings and salutations. My name is Michael Schwann, and welcome to episode number 49 of an ongoing series, First Impression. The series where we experience only the very beginning of a piece of media and then review it from the perspective of what it shows us in its opening moments. Today, we are going to see what impression the beginning of the turn-based tactical role-playing video game Tears of Avia leaves on us. Tears of Avia was developed by Cuckoo Squeaky Games and published by P-Cube Limited and released in October of 2020 on Xbox One and PC. Now, before we go any farther, I do have just a little bit of personal history with the game, although I don't believe it'll really influence my first impression at all. This game I first came across in 2015. It had a Kickstarter campaign going, and unfortunately, the Kickstarter campaign didn't get noticed by anyone or anything until it only had like a week left. If even that, it didn't have a whole lot of time left in it. It got a whole bunch of attention, but it ended up missing its Kickstarter funding goal by like, I don't know, it was like one or $2,000. It was very little and it was very disappointing because I thought the game even five years ago looked very interesting, engaging. It's something that I wanted to play. And I do enjoy these turn-based tactical games like Fire Emblem or Shining Force or XCOM or Final Fantasy Tactics or Disgaea or whatever comparison you want to make. They're fun. And this game particularly looked really pretty. And it does have a couple of things that largely set it a little bit aside from the rest of a very wide genre that has a lot of different options available into it. And that is that the characters have their own skill trees, much along the ways that you would see in more conventional JRPGs, but instead it's this tactical style. Now, I don't really know exactly what that ends up meaning, but it does mean that there is a larger amount of depth to each character that you end up getting into your army, squad, platoon, group, whatever it ends up being called in this game. And I also really just enjoyed the visual and general graphics approach of the game. And I was very sad that it didn't get funded. And instead of trying again on another Kickstarter or maybe trying over on Indiegogo or something like that, the developer, which is a single person, um, the they decided instead of trying again that they were just going to just start a Patreon and develop it themselves. And it took five years, and the game has finally come out, and we have it today. And I'm very interested to see what, over all that time, they finally managed to make on their own without actually any, like, larger, like, chunk funding. They did have a Patreon that was feeding them, you know, a little bit of supplemental income. But throughout the entire process, they were never, like, raking in the dollars. So I do hope that they had a successful launch. I hope the game's release is going well for them. But I am interested to see what this game actually has in store. Now, before we get started, I would invite you over to our Twitch channel. There's a link in the description down below. We go live on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And, of course, you can come hang out with us on Discord and Twitter. Links down below. But without further ado, let's begin. Okay. Is the controller supported? It seems to be. Let me see what's in here. Button mappings. I'm just going to guess that they did a good job on figuring those out themselves. Let's begin. Okay. Oh, I get to choose my starting character is what this is. Okay, interesting. What are the differences? Iris, she's a mage. As a self-assured master of magic, Iris is quintessential mage. Brimming with the confidence to match her ego, with the desire to get ahead as quickly as possible, her ambitions for arcane power know no limit. Rawls a brawler, a ranger, a warrior, and a priest. Momoko, Momo, Momo. Oh, her name's. I'm gonna call her Momo. I think you win just because of your name. I don't care about the other names very much. Selfless and caring, Momo's only true wish is to be useful as a priestess of Astera, while others may perceive it as naivete. Momoko is determined to find the good in everyone, no matter who they are. All right, Momoko it is. Uh, ooh. I don't act. Standard. Is that choosing standard? I don't. Mm. They're the same size right now. And if I click to the left, standard gets smaller. So I I think that I'm on standard. <laughs> <laughs> this has permadeath in it, though. Interesting. Um, we'll go with, I hope I'm choosing standard. I didn't expect it to be voice acted. 
。桃子になるとは。桃子。ヌメトンモリの孤児院で、巫女に育てられた内気な少女は、リアチの忠実な信仰者。彼女は人の長所を見抜くことができるように努力し、立派な巫女になるという、強い願望を持っている。So、pretty. 幼い頃から桃子は、孤児院の聖書を毎晩、何度も読んだ。最後に巫女たちの弁達でトルドレッドに旅立ち教皇のもとで勉強した6日間森や谷をさまよい一人の商人が旅慣れしていない桃子に道を案内してくれたモミジの七つの月に疲れ果てた状態でトルドレッドにたどり着いただが広い影と肌寒い空気にしか歓迎されなかった小さい町の陰に一人佇む者がいる気がつくと地から這い上がったゾンビに囲まれていた彼は必死に近づく者を打ち払うが力は弱まっているたじろぐところサイオンを求める者は動き出すのかニート That was a lot of artwork that was done Oh, I can move freely. Okay, do I need to get down here and help him? Oh, he already, he already killed it. Okay. I really didn't expect this to be voice acted. I'm not complaining by any means, but it's. Who did the translation? That is not what she said, but anyway. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. He is the guard. Liron-to-Roren-wa-hashit-te-nigeta-yo-so-desu-ka-zombie-wa-osoroshii-desu-kara-ne-kare-ra-wa-doko-kara-kita-no-de-shou-sa-dai-se-do-to-kan-kei-
If we get in his face, you should target us instead of her, right? <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's fine. I understand. Lower health, squishier mage. Makes sense. Neat. We got a coarse bow and a holy chalice? Interesting. And here's those skill trees, straight out of an MMO. A heal, a Asuna type effect, a regeneration, reduce damage there we go there's the difference it has all of the squares in the three by three lit up so this does hit everything okay and we can also see that it has a cooldown a lot of these other ones didn't that has a six turn cooldown okay well let's get the heal okay he also has an ability ready uh, a whack attack Okay, so that hits one target, and then the other ones take half. Let's get the, the, the AoE strike. やっと倒しました。敵がまた来るだろう。住人のみんなが無事かどうか気になる。俺は町の向こう側を調べに行く。the movement's a little floaty like she doesn't actually like it, it looks like well obviously it was made separately from the environment but it doesn't look like it interacts with the environment a whole lot there's also like some weird like float going on right here but the actual oh i can zoom in sweet and i can spin the camera awesome but the actual models look really good, and so do the environments. Like, the actual visual presentation of it is sweet. I also like that that battle just took place where we were. A lot of games will do that, and some other will, like, Divi make another reference to Divinity. Like, Divinity Original Sin does that, the battle just occurs in the map, whereas some other games like Fire Emblem, the map is a separate individual load. And I'm not, I, I, I tend to prefer the ones where it, it takes place in the map itself better. Search for survivors in the chapel. Okay. He went into the tavern. It's the library. Town hall. I don't know how to use this yet. Okay, where's the chapel at? Is this the chapel? Chapel. Oh. Oh my. Got some Final Fantasy VII shit up in here. Ballin! I know how to heal! You want, you want to tell me what? Oh, sweet! I can move around like while the cutscene's happening. That's cool. So cute! なんとかここを抑えることはできましたが、あの者たちはだんだん強くなっています。だとしたら町に危険が、ポータルストーンを持って行ってください。これで地下へ入れるでしょう。ち、地下室？私が行くのですか？新館長をこのまま放っておくな
How... I have 51 months. God of death, war, shadows, life, and nature. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of close. Okay, so if we get their blessing, condition damage is more effective, attack damage increased, energy costs are reduced, healing is more effective, improved defense. Oh, it... Interesting! Giving to the goddess of life made the goddess... Well, it made a bunch of them not like us. Like, we gave to one, so the other ones were less happy with us? Interesting. So, what if I give to, like... Nice. Okay. I don't know what the percentage means. How much they like us? You, you fucking hate us. I don't give a shit. You're gross. Neat. That was cool. Alright, so we got both of their blessings right now. We have improved defense and we heal for more. Is there a sprint button by chance? Or is she... Whoop! That's a menu. Or is she moving as fast as she can? Okay. She's moving as fast as she can. At least with all the buttons that I just randomly pressed. Okay, that's also movement. That's camera. That's also movement. That's again menu. That's interact. These don't seem to do anything right now. Are we going alone? I have reservations about this. Neat. Move range limited to one? Oh, I don't think that'll be effective. I don't think that's going to happen to us. That was one of the things that was on the difficulty thing, is that on the hardcore mode, each level has its own modifier. So that must be what that modifier is. <laughs> 9,000 damage a single attack. Clear the level in one turn? Clear the level after deploying five characters. I wonder what you get for doing those. Hi. Is this a supposed to lose fight? Oh, sweet. Okay, he is here. Awesome. Oh, nope. That thing is... The the, the only one square of movement is applicable applied right now. Unless they can only move one square when they get out of the... The thing. What if I just have her stay right there? Can that reach? It can. Shoot him. That didn't do shit. That's right next to him. Also right next to him. Okay, we're just done. Can it also only move one square? It can also only move one square. Interesting. So we could buy ourselves a whole lot of time by just doing this. To the point that... We ain't doing no 9,000 in one turn, but we can definitely just, uh, wait, move? Okay, I apparently can't move back onto that thing, or I'm just inept. Both of these things are possible. Let's have a uh, let's have us get it. Will this kill it? Yes. Minimum of 23. Noise. I was hoping I could see like what this is. I guess I should have seen if I can equip something. <laughs> Definitely we're not getting any of these. You just need to come back late game with a mega character and just Blow blow that one guy up is what I'm hearing. Oh, we got two levels out of that. Sweet. Okay, so we can't get these yet. Okay, I don't think we need the heal just yet. Let's go ahead and get some damage. Yeah, get some damage. I like that. Oh, I should have gotten that earlier. Oh, well. Uh, we can get it now. Because I don't think we need these other things just yet. We'll probably be able to get them pretty quickly, too. 
Afrin did not gain level, so it did matter that we killed it with our own, with Momo, that Momo killed it. Inventory. Okay. Can he hold more than one weapon? No. Can he... There we go. 28 to 27. Oh, interesting. The item has an ability on it. That bolt that we shot is actually from the weapon. We don't have a bow yet. Nobody can... I don't think anyone can use this. Oh, we can. Oh, it, can anyone just use any weapon? Are they better with one weapon over a different one? So what are these other slots? No? The slots aren't very indicative of what's supposed to go there. Main main slot definitely seems to be weapon. Just that big boy. Okay, we'll go farther. I've... Um, can I go in any of these rooms yet? No. Okay, the controls on mouse and keyboard in terms of running around are not as uh, solid as keyboard. Not Wait, that's not what I meant. Combat felt... Okay, we didn't get more money, so can we give more to them? Yes. Did these percentages go down? No. Okay. Is there any reason I can't just get all of them? Except for you. <laughs> like, I have all their blessings now. At least it seems like it. Yeah, movement controls were much better on the controller. They're a little wonky on mouse and keyboard. Okay, I guess we just go back in. Players lose 10% life at the start of a new turn. Shit. Well, good thing we at least have one healing spell. Okay, we're just gonna have him get up there. Combat works really well with the mouse and keyboard. Whoa! Did he crit? Because that was that was pretty extra. Or is it just that epic every time? Okay, you can still reach that if you take a step back. So go ahead and take a step back, Momo. How much damage does this do? It says it's more effective against the undead. Well then. Wow. Okay. She like straight up dropped out of the air. Does facing matter in this game? Okay, he started he actually took damage now. Ooh. Oh, he that was the ten percent. The forty was the ten percent damage. Okay, she can't use that again. But she can use this one, which... Oh, is an AoE. Even better. Does it hurt our friend? No. Sweet. Alright, move here. Oh, you can't use that again? Can... Huh. Can I just... I can't attack regularly. That other sword I could. Hmm. Don't know if I like that or not. Because this means on his next turn, he's not going to have anything to do. Did he just hit that for 342?
hers also has a three turn cooldown. Hmm. He doesn't have another, like, all of my actions are tied to this. He couldn't equip another sword. So he could do nothing? Oh, shit. Well, that's fine. The most that she could have done is healed him, which she can do now, I guess. What? Ah, oh, it's not what I wanted to do. I don't know how I feel about characters not having, like, a basic attack. Is her smite cooled back down? It is. And it should kill him. I don't know how I feel about seeing these every single time either. Eighty-nine exactly. I'll take it. Yeah, that was rough. If you spawn something else, oh, okay. I was like, I'm gonna be. Is that a tear of Avia? If you just kill all of the ghouls, it'll be fine. She is not stuttering nearly as much as this translation is making it, like, out to be. Legendary Rusty Iron Chalice. Interesting. Okay, do you have... Okay, this is an ability you can use every turn. Got it. So, you're gonna get that. <laughs> she leveled up twice because she got the killing blow again. You can heal every turn, so there's something for you to do every turn. Go and get that too. Yeah, that felt pretty shit. Like, the fight wasn't bad, but thinking that I should replace my equipment around to just like, oh, this looks better. I should probably grab the thing that's better. Which, I mean, isn't inherently a bad thing, but that sucked <laughs> that I just had nothing to do on some of those turns. Uh, does it cost money? Ah, Diablo style. Interesting, interesting. アフレさん、おはようございます。待たせてしまってごめんなさい。いや、was he one of the starting characters, Alfrin? I'll have to go look. How do I save? Is it in here? No. Does it save automatically? By saving the church. I see that you survived. That's good. Oh, 
あなたのおかげでトルドレットに活気が戻りましたもっと力になれたらいいんですがトルドレットとこの大聖堂の代わりに感謝いたします大聖堂の役に立てて嬉しいそのためにトルドレットに来たんですご存知だと思いますがここでは5人の神々が祀られています気になることがございましたらごきげんよう Mm, that's about the gods. <laughs> you, you want to tell me how to save? <laughs> well, let's see if it's saved. Okay, it looks like it did. Oh! And we did choose hardcore. <laughs> well, we got our answer <laughs> on, on what we did. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, that's fine. I just, I'm only going in here to see if... Okay, he is not. He is not one of the starting characters. That's fine. I was just curious. Those two fights were already 5% of the game? I mean, that's not a bad thing. I don't... I wouldn't expect this game to be super long, given that it was developed by one person. Um, I am curious, though, how... Because Momo seems to have her very own start. Which means that the other characters probably have their own start. And I wonder if their stories intertwine or if they're very individualized or what. One downside of first impressions is that in terms of this video, we won't know. I do need to... Okay, can't go in there. Can't go in the library. Can't go in the town hall. Oh, did it? Oh, I, I didn't actually... It, it probably didn't save this. That's fine. M move, move along. Meet Dumont in the library. That's okay. I'm actually trying to see... Shop! Sweet. Okay. And there's an identify scroll. Upgrade skills. Interesting. Let's buy this just because we're trying to get to as much information as we can in this right now. Identify. Okay, so it literally does the ability that we already have, but it's got lot better stats. Okay. I wish I knew what went in these other slots. I assume it's probably like armor accessories, maybe. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> She's literally holding it. That's it's cool. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm gonna step into the library in hopes that it saves the game. Just read books. Whoa. Exposition! Hello, Dumont! マーセルラプルームの王国の銃の宝はいかがかなえっと世界のあらゆる宝が載っていますよアラスタランチーズの記事は私のお気に入りでねあ、いえ、結構ですそれより She's interested in books, just not right now. Oh,大きな声を出さないでください。あ、わかった、わかったから。何を見てほしいんだ。どうですか? <笑>ど、ど、どこでこれを見つけたんだいだ、大聖堂の地下室ですよ。予言がよ、予言いるヌールの予言だこれが何を意味するかいいえほ、ほ、本当にちょっと君は太陽を求めるものだ why did they translate Scion to Seeker? It's like they translated Zombie to Ghoul when they didn't need to. そしてティアを見つけることができるんだ。いや、共鳴しているものがあるかもしれない。な、なぜ私がサイオンを求めるものだと普通ならティアは人間を寄せ付けない。しかし君はこうしてティアを持つことができている。
Ah, so each of the five people are the five seekers. So they will be coming together at some point to, to open up the mega portal or whatever that the tears are going to do. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Unlock a portal to the demonic realm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stories don't have to be unique to be enjoyable by any stretch of the mind, but <laughs> that, that, was, that was good timing. そう。どこへ行けばいいのです。なあ、そうだ。西にある沼へ行くといい。そこに他のティアのありかを教えてくれる預言者がいるはず。しかし、泥沼はとても危険な場所だ。注意しないと死んでしまう。話は以上だ。仲間
it crashed. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I do have enough to give a first impression on it. I'm not going to take that away from it either in that impression. I do have some thoughts to share. And, uh, yeah, so I'll pass it back to myself. Peace. Okay, so there's a lot that I, I have to say here about what we just experienced together. And there's a lot of positive, a lot of concern, and a very little little pile of negative. And it's it, it's... In a lot of ways what I expected, but also in a lot of ways not. And I realize that's a useless statement that doesn't really contribute anything into my opinion. So we'll just we'll just take it piece by piece. We'll start with the, the, the good, bad, and the ugly, I guess, as much of a cliche as I feel that is. So there's a lot of things that are good here. I enjoy the character designs, I enjoy the general visual style, I think the game looks really good. I enjoyed what I played. I thought that it was a pretty well-designed experience for something that's only been made by one person. Now, I understand that at this point, a lot of people are going to be taking that one person concept and throwing it up against a lot of other very successful juggernauts that are in the gaming space. Whether you want to take Phasmophobia, Stardew Valley, Dust and Elysian's Tale, there's, a, there's some options out there of, of games that have done incredibly well for themselves that are developed by only one person. But I don't think that's necessarily a fair comparison. Every single developer, every single person, every single individual is different. And where the developer of Stardew Valley did an incredible job there, they might have struggled to develop something like Phasmophobia, given how different they are. And those two developers might have struggled to develop something like Tears of Avia. It's a matter of what your skill set is. And in terms of what we just played of Tears of Avia, I did enjoy it. I thought that it was a, a bit generic but also, like, generic doesn't necessarily mean bad. There's very few unique concepts, unique takes anymore. It's a bit generic, though. I mean, it's very just, like, run-of-the-mill high fantasy, at least with what we've seen in the opening gate. Everything appears to be in kind of this, like, pseudo-high fantasy environment, sort of. There's a little bit of hint of, like, some sort of steampunk aesthetics here and there that we saw. But otherwise, it kind of just seems very... Almost like anime Lord of the Ringsy, as, like bad of a take as that is but the visuals are enjoyable and I, I really wasn't expecting this game to be voice acted at all whatsoever and that was a, a very very large surprise to me and it's not even bad voice acting I mean as long as you don't mind Japanese I didn't check to see if it had an English voice acting option in it I doubt it does if it does sweet but I'm not gonna go check <laughs> but the voice acting was solid it was good I enjoyed the voices a lot I I have some concerns about the translation though because the translation in places wasn't accurate. It wasn't necessarily inaccurate, but it wasn't it wasn't exactly what the characters said either. And there's some choice of words that is interesting, as I said in the gameplay portion, like you could very clearly hear the Japanese character saying Scion, and the English language translations, the subtitles, whatever you want to call them, um, they wrote Seeker, and you can hear the Japanese say Zombie, and they decided to call them Ghouls instead. It's not a big deal, it's just one of those translation things that you just like, why? There was no reason to do that when it's so clearly something different. And I know very, very little Japanese, but I know just enough to know that, like, there was some statements that it's like, they just said that, like, thank goodness that you said, you know, praise the gods that you're okay. And it's like, you you didn't need to translate it that way. You could have all, you literally could have just one for one bit. And I don't understand why you did that. Again, not a negative, just kind of like a, a, con a question, a concern that I don't understand. And the other thing that is a somewhat negative, again, this we're in the bad right now. Goods were very pretty, decent design, good voice acting. The, the game presented itself well, the mechanics felt fine. I accidentally started on hardcore, but whatever, we did okay, we survived. <laughs> The, the other part of that is, though, is that if we go into the other piece of the bad, is the skills. The skills are neat. They're fun to have. They remind me of, like, Divinity Original Sin 2, where the characters develop new abilities that can do different things. That said, the skills have cooldowns, which in itself is not bad. But in my second fight, third fight, third fight, one of my characters 
had a one skill that had a three round cooldown, another skill that had a five round cooldown. So there was like a turn every other, uh, like every other round, he had nothing to do. And that's alleviated now because I picked the skill moving forward that will, he can just use every turn. But that was a very rough, like, start because nothing really showed me that I should pick that ability that has a one turn cooldown first and largely I'm pretty like I still managed to get by but that could that was like oh no that's not okay luckily it it's not going to be an issue moving forward but the fact that that was a possibility at all in terms of a first impression was like, oh, I have very large concerns right now. The other thing is the skills, like, they're flashy. Some of them, only some of them are flashy where the characters like get a background and do all this stuff. I'm, I'm just starting. I didn't expect to get these big flashy abilities this early, nor do I feel like I need them to be flashy every time. Like some of the abilities are like, bam, I summon a hammer and hit you, or bam, I have some glowy particle effects around me and heal you, and it just stays in here, and those all feel fine. But having like my basic smite spell be this big extravagant thing, it was cool two times, and then the third time I'm like, I just need, I, I just wanted to deal, can just deal damage. Like I would have been still perfectly fine if she had the particle effects, raised her staff up, and then a beam of golden light came down on the combat field, and that was it. And it took a third of the time that the special effect of the ability did. That's currently in the game. Minor nitpick, but it definitely was something that I know was going to wear on me after a little while of like, all right, that's cool. I, I, maybe it has the option to skip it. I hope it does, because after the 10th time, I'm like, I don't want to see this anymore. I don't care. I just need it to do damage. Be, please move on. Thank you. And there is, I had an ugly, but what was it? There was one thing that was like a major, like, uh oh, no, 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 no. But I don't remember what it is now. It must not have been that important. <laughs> Or maybe it maybe it was the thing about the skill cooldowns. I don't know. It's hard to ad lib these off the cuff because I don't write a script for my outro and I do them all at once in a single take. So you know how that goes. I think it's a fine experience. I think it's a, a think it's a great product from a single person. Obviously, it's not going to stand up to the massive budgets of games like Disgaea or Divinity Original Sin, but they did a really good job. I feel that there is a lot of things in this game that are trying to take from a lot of other places with like the item drops and the identification system and just in general the way that it's built it looks like they took a lot of their favorite things from a bunch of different franchises and stuck them into the game they're building which imitation is the purest form of flattery and it works out it works pretty well I think that the introductory experience could be improved just a little bit because if you have somebody who's like really new to games or really new to this style of game or just doesn't pick up games quickly, this could be really jarring for a lot of people because there's borderline zero tutorial at all and the game isn't on its own very intuitive given the issues that I had with skill cooldowns. Just some thoughts, just some thoughts. Ultimately, I think it was a fine first impression. It definitely had some things that are, some some weight around the ankles that kind of made it a little bit harder to pull itself up and pull and push itself forward or push itself farther. Um, but by no means was it bad. I definitely enjoyed what I played. The visuals are great, the sound is great, the gameplay was solid. Just needs, just needs a little bit of polish, I think is really what it is. I think it could have done with like some serious like internal testing, maybe opened up like an internal beta or a closed beta or something, just because a lot of the things that need adjusted, cause like I accidentally started hardcore mode. Um, it, and that, that would just be one of those things of like, make it glow so that people know which one they're picking. M um, encourage or put a tutorial thing in there so that people will choose the ability that is off cooldown every turn as their first ability and then let them choose freely after that so no matter what they won't have that experience that I just had. And there's a bunch of small things like that that are just like note this, note that, note this to make it a much cleaner and smoother experience. And I know that they're still working on it. I mean there was a patch to this game that came out a few days ago before I even did the first impression for it. And so they're still going to be working on and improving it. 
but your launch is important. That first impression is really important because even if you make something better, not every game is going to have a No Man's Sky where you have this horrible launch and three years later you now have this immensely beloved game because you worked on it and improved on it. Not everyone's gonna go give you that chance. Not everyone gave No Man's Sky that chance and it's gonna be even harder to get a second chance for an indie game that's developed by a single person. But that's just my take. Let me hear what your thoughts were on Tears of Avia and what we saw in the introductory sequence of this game down in the comments below. Our next first impression is going to be on a game called Alice Madness Returns. I've never actually played this. It's a game that's talked about a lot about this incredible experience that is unlike anything else of this, gr not grotesque, this like grim dark take on the Alice in Wonderland story where Alice is like, a serial killer or something? I don't actually know. I actually have this really large benefit of, aside from the box art and knowing that Alice is holding a bloody knife, I know jack shit about this game, but I've heard really great things about it. And so that's what we're gonna do next time. We're gonna take a, take a look at what the opening of Alice Madness Returns has in store for us. Now, we mentioned in the intro, and we'll mention it again, we do have a Twitch channel. We go live on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. There's a link in the description down below. Tuesdays, we kind of play whatever we want. Sometimes we play deeper into whatever we did a first impression on. Um, the stream right after this video goes out is actually on a community request. We're going to be playing Home Sweet Home because it's spoopy season. Otherwise, Thursdays is Two Dead Dudes, where we play through the Souls-like subgenre of video games, taking on Dark Souls and Bloodborne and Neo and whatever else. We die a lot. Fridays is Power Couple, where I stream with my wife, Athena Latina, and we play JRPGs. And at the time of recording this video, we were playing Persona 4 Golden. And it's a really great, incredible time. And we have some bonus streams and stuff in and out and around there too, so come and check it out. Also follow us on Twitter, we're really active on there, we love chatting with people about anything and everything up and down the scale of the spectrum, and also do the same thing on our Discord channel. Links to everything down below. But that's it everybody, if you do go check out the YouTube, another YouTube video, or if I see you in one of the live streams, thank you and enjoy.